In the last video, we saw that I've significantly increased my average daily heart rate variability from 47 milliseconds per day in 2018 to about 64 milliseconds per day through the first six months of 2023, which is a 35% increase. Conversely, for the resting heart rate, after starting with an average daily resting heart rate of about 51 beats per minute in 2018, I've significantly reduced that to about 44 beats per minute through the first six months of 2023, which is a 14% decrease. So what's contributing to these, or what's potentially contributing to these improved data for the heart rate variability and resting heart rate since 2018, as a higher heart rate variability in conjunction with a lower resting heart rate is moving towards more youthful values. So the most obvious impact on these metrics on heart rate variability and resting heart rate is exercise training. So let's start off by taking a look at that. So to track ex exercise training or regular exercise, I use the average daily heart rate or ADHR as an index of daily physical activity. And that's in contrast with using step counts. Uh, and this value is provided by my fitness tracker and I wear whoop, not affiliated or sponsored. So what's the correlation for the average daily heart rate with next day heart, uh, resting heart rate? And that's what we can see here with the resting heart rate on the y-axis plotted against the average daily heart rate on the x. And here we can see a significant positive correlation. The correlation coefficient, lowercase r, is 0.63, and we can see that that p-value is less than 0.05. In fact, that's a very, I hate to say very significant, but 10 to the negative 134. Uh, it's a significant correlation. In other words, too much daily activity too often is bad for my resting heart rate. So what's the, cor what's the correlation for the average daily heart rate with heart rate variability? And that's what we can see here. So in this case, we've got a, an inverse correlation. In other words, too much daily activity too often is bad for my heart rate variability. So together from these two plots, we can see that the higher my average daily heart rate is, that's significantly correlated with worse data for heart rate variability and resting heart rate. So with that in mind, finding the balance between active and rest days is important for optimizing both of these metrics. So what does that look like? So here's a screenshot of a seven day period at the end of May uh, in 2023. And before every workout, I try to have as low of, uh, as low of activity as possible so that I'm close to fully recovered in terms of CV metrics prior to workout days which are here, the 58 and 57 beat per minutes, beats per minute are workout days. And then after a workout day, so my usual workout is an 80 minute workout. This is standardized, I've been doing it for years. Full body workout, including uh, weights, uh, calisthenics, uh, flexibility, mobility, balance, etc. I won't get into that in this video, but what I wanna highlight is after the workout day, I purposefully titrate activity downward such that the average daily heart rate is less for at least two days after the workout, which enables the heart rate variability and resting heart rate to recover sufficiently prior to the next workout. So the next workout uh, after that 52 was then the 57, after which I titrated activity uh, lower again for the two days after that, and then probably did a workout on that third day. So it's a three-day cycle. Now, it's not a perfect system. Sometimes it takes an extra day of having a relatively low ADHR before doing the workout, but this is what works for me. Maybe for others, they can work out more often, but this is what works for me. All right, so physical activity, PA, isn't the only variable that may affect resting heart rate and heart rate variability. And with that in mind, what's the relationship for body weight with resting heart rate? Let's start with the resting heart rate and go into heart rate variability next. So here we're going to take a look at my average monthly body weight values from August of 2018 through June of 2023. And we're also going to take a look at the plot. We're going to look at a plot for the average monthly heart rate over that same time period. And note that my body weight is recorded every morning after using the bathroom and fasted. So when looking at these plots for the body weight on the left and the resting heart rate on the right, there are some obvious trends, especially uh, during periods when I've lost weight. And note that this is intentional weight loss as I'm, I've always wanted to be as lean as possible. During periods when I've lost weight, resting heart rate has declined. And conversely, during periods when I've gained weight, resting heart rate has increased. Now, this is just gross morphological data. We're just looking at overall trends. What about more specifically? Is body weight significantly correlated on its own on, on a daily basis with resting heart rate? So here we're going to take a look at daily data for the resting heart rate versus body weight. And this is from August of 2018 when I first started tracking through the end of June 2023, first half of 2023. And note that little n, that's almost 1,800 days of data. So when looking at the plot for resting heart rate on the y-axis versus body weight, we can see a significant positive correlation. In other words, 
as body weight increases, that's significantly correlated with higher resting heart rates in my data. And conversely, as my body weight has approached 144 pounds, the resting heart rate has approached 43 beats per minute. Now, extrapolating on this plot raises an interesting question. What will resting heart rate look like if I'm able to further reduce body weight? And I should say more specifically, body fat, as again, I'm always trying to be as lean as possible. Based on DEXA that I did in December of 2022, when I was 151 pounds, my body fat percentage was about 12%. So at 140 pounds, assuming I lose no muscle mass, no lean mass, just pure fat mass uh, that's lost, I'll be about 5 to 6% uh, body fat, which is pretty close to my lowest limit. So what will that look like in terms of the resting heart rate if I'm able to get there? So stay, stay tuned for that data in a future video. All right, so what's the relationship for body weight with heart rate variability? So in terms of looking at the average monthly heart rate variability, which is now shown on the right, although it doesn't look uh, as similar as the resting heart rate plot in terms of overlap with body weight, there are some trends. During periods where I've lost body weight, heart rate variability has increased. And during at least one period where I've gained body weight, heart rate variability has decreased. All right, what about more specific data in terms of body weight's correlation with heart rate variability? And that's what we'll see here using the same setup that we did for the resting heart rate, daily heart rate variability data versus daily body weight data with about 1,800 days of data. And that's what's shown here. So now we see a significant inverse correlation. In other words, as my body weight has been higher, that's significantly correlated with lower heart rate variability. And conversely, as my body weight has approached 144 pounds, heart rate variability has approached relatively higher values, 75 milliseconds. And just like we did for the resting heart rate, what will this trend look like? What will these data look like? As you can see, I have no data from about 144 pounds to 140. What will heart rate variability look like if I'm able to get closer to 140? Will it get close to 80 milliseconds? I don't know. We'll see. So we can see from both these data for resting heart rate and heart rate variability that they approach youthful values as body weight decreases, at least in my case. I can't say if this would be true for others. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, and telomere testing, which is also included in that test, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, and note that their biomarker panel is mostly different from the at-home metabolomics and also includes ApoB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.